Saturday. Christmas comes early. Unbelievable! Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone! Chargers. It's a touchdown! An exclusive NFL game. This is fantastic! Live in primetime. Wow! Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. Welcome to Pod Mavericks After Dark. This is Kirk Henderson and Josh Bo. We are joining you on Friday night. It's about 10.20 here in the Central Time Zone. And the Dallas Mavericks just played their second straight barn burner of a game. <laughs> coming away with their second straight clutch victory. Defeating the uh, Brooklyn Nets 125-120. to Josh, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I think it's pretty funny considering... Uh, last season uh, that they're now 2-0 and in the clutch so <laughs> it's maybe this is their season I don't know but it's just they just they're just immediately wiping away that awful uh, clutch record from last year at least so far it's only two games but we'll see it's I mean it, there, I don't even know where to start with this one so you know <laughs> Luka. One of the things well, well one of the things about covering a Luka Doncic team we're in year six is that at a certain point you kind of start looking for other stuff to talk about, to lead, uh, and, and and write about, frankly, because in any instance, you can just go, well, look at, look at what Luca did. <laughs> and this felt like a special Luca game very early on, but how special was kind of going to be the question? Because, you know, for those of you who, who may, might have, you know, only kind of casually paid attention, flip back and forth between Rangers and Stars, the Mavericks had a chance in the second quarter to just bury the Nets. They were up by a few points, and then they had multiple possessions in the middle of the second quarter where they had awful turnovers or missed shots. And then the third quarter was just like a game of hot potato with Tim Hardaway and Josh Green like losing their minds, only for Luka to slowly start to turn it on. Now, we don't have... We don't get many of these kind of Luka games. And what I mean by these kind of Luka games, I mean three-point shooting Luka games. Because Luka finished, for everybody who know, or, you know who watched the game, with 49 points, 10 rebounds, and 7 helpers. But he was 9 of 14 from 3, including a, I mean, it's basically a, a right-handed skyhook from the right wing uh, that went off the glass and went in that was effectively the game winner. Well, just I mean, in the pantheon of Luka ridiculous shots, I don't even know where you'd rank it, but it was just... It's so unbelievable because it, it didn't even really look like a real basketball shot. Um, I was laughing. I, I just, there's really no other way around it. And Luke, he, he was unbelievable this game. He still left a lot on the table. I think if his teammates could hit open shots, uh, he would have more than the seven helpers that he had. I, I mean, Hardaway just killed him tonight on these sorts of things. Um, but it was a, it was a really fun Luca game because it was not just Luca, you know, getting to the free. It was all sorts of different stuff. It was, you know, mid range. It was three pointers. It was free throws. It was, I just, I had a great time watching it and it really snuck up on you where all of a sudden he has 40. Then all of a sudden he has 49. What did you think? We've seen um, Luca drag this team kicking and screaming over the finish line for a win. A bunch of times um, mm -hmm. since he's been drafted here. That might be his best one yet. And really? I I mean, maybe the 60 point, you know, what was 60, 20, 10 game against the Knicks last season. I mean, that one was pretty remarkable. That's the only one I think that can top this one. But sure. I mean, this game was, they were 
they should have lost this game. Um, yes. I mean, it's not just that he scored a bunch. Again, it's he basically made four straight three-pointers to close the game, then tossed in two free throws right before that run. Mm-hmm. He outscored the Nets 14-8 to eight in the final three minutes. He scored 14 of the final 17 points for the Mavericks. I mean, it was just so impressive. When he made that hooking three-pointer, I mean, it was just unbelievable. It was, I mean, that's the kind of shot that, like, you're not, like, he's supposed to miss that and the Nets get a fast, like, you know, like, that was just not supposed to happen. I just, the way it was, I'm sorry, I'm almost at a loss for words with with, with Luca, but I've just never, I mean, just the way that this team was just doing nothing for that fourth quarter, except for Dwight Powell. Uh, and you know, I think Kyrie did did do a little bit before Luca came in. So so I have to give give Kyrie, it to yeah. We're yeah, they circle ca- back so, on Kyrie. But, but when Luca came in, I mean, he, despite what they were doing, they still couldn't get a lead really. And then Luca came in, and it was it was over. And it was just we've never seen. I mean, I think I just looked at it up while you were talking. Pretty sure this is a career high in threes made. So this is like you know something we've literally never seen. Luke could do before and just doing it in a row like he's had some some moments where he makes some threes and you're like oh crap look out but to end the game making four straight three-pointers when nothing is happening by the way like the offense was dead like and really it was like looking kind of like same old Mavs where like you know their offense just dries up and he has to fling something up I mean that's the epitome of that final three right like that possession was smoked like they had nothing going on, and he just flipped that up like a like a, with a wing and a prayer, uh, and it goes in because he's like the most ridiculous NBA player I, I've ever seen in my life. So, um, I don't know. Like that was, I mean, I was I was ready to sit down here and talk to you about how this was going to be, how this was a crappy loss, and there's here's eight things that this team did that was really crappy and like that was not good, and they need to fix. And then Luca just like pulls a rabbit out of the hat. I mean, it's just I want to say it's unbelievable, but yeah, like you said, we're 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 how many years into this? And mm-hmm. and he does this stuff every, almost every week. Uh it's it's remarkable. I mean, there's a there's a point you can make where you would like, man, it would be great if they didn't need Luca to play like Superman to get some of these wins, but man, it's just you take him where you can get him, especially considering the fact that you know, two and oh. And and they had the preseason internet like they they could easily be zero and two right now and we'd be like oh here we go like even if these wins might be a little bit of fool's gold you just take them because they just what the West is going to be fair. Well, and and this is we talked about this. I remember we knew and we talked about it during the seven game win streak last season, right before the Mavericks died. That we we kind of knew it was bullshit, yeah. and to be quite candid those games feel like this these two games i'm not well, learning this enough. game is this game especially felt like one of those games yeah. from the from the now Saturday. that's not to say i'm not taking i'm not enjoying it like wins mm-hmm. are fantastic and like you mm-hmm. said you've got to mark up wins but within the wins for the reasons why these games are close the mavericks then have to figure out what to do about why the games are close to begin <laughs> with because they're if they're better than these two teams the Spurs and the Nets, then they need to have more separation for longer. And through two games, we've seen very little functional team defense. Now that's not to get like, again, don't, we don't like being negative. We just kind of want to talk about what we're actually seeing here. And when you back away from Luca's excellence, and I think we should circle back kind of on the grumpy stuff in the second half of the show. Like yeah, yeah, there, like, were, ahead, let's, there were there, some other things. There yeah. were some really other interesting things that that I want to talk about. Um, I'm looking through. Actually, you know what? I really they're they're re- like on a on a play by play. I find myself very very frustrated. Um, so you I, can't I, wait? <laughs> no, no, because I'm not mad. It's just it's okay. like they won this game because of Luca's brilliance. Yeah. Uh, I I I, cert- I I I do want to sort of circle to the Kyrie element of it all. I think if you're worried about Kyrie Irving, and I did my my uh, you know two games worth of math, I'm pretty sure he's shooting 39 percent from the floor. Uh, I, I want to say it's like 16 for 41, something like that. Yeah, I am not worried about Kyrie Irving. No, me neither. That's where I come back to. I think that 
the shots that he has taken have been great shots that have not fallen. I do not feel he like he has pressed. I do feel like he has gotten sort of robbed on free throw attempts on a few times. Um, and he just hasn't gotten the calls. Yeah. I, I think he, you know, if, if there is a criticism, he could stand to be a little bit more engaged on defense. He's been a little bit of a saloon door at times, but he, he's not the only one. So it's not like that's high up the mark. <laughs> Yeah. I think that 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 they've won these two games with Kyrie Irving playing probably below his own efficiency standards is important. Now he did have a 6-0 run by himself when the game looked like it was creaking open for the net or for the Nets with Luca on the bench to start the fourth quarter. Yeah. Uh so and he, he has did had that against the Spurs too. Yes, he's he did. he's had two good fourth quarters. So, so. Th- ultimately he has provided what more he's provided enough to where the Mavericks won. And that's mm-hmm. important. But if you're frustrated, if you're out there saying, and you know, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of like, you know, just like there are Kyrie or I'm sorry, Luca specific fans that really only care about him. There are a lot of Kyrie specific fans that only care about him. That's mm-hmm. fine. It's how you want to enjoy the game. I get it. But if you're worried about him or you want Luke, you want Luca to give more touches to him. I think that happens in the course of the game. Like Luca's not going to stand in the way of, of a, a Kyrie flow like we saw oh, it last no. year with that incredible fourth quarter that Kyrie had yeah. so I'm still feeling very bullish about this pairing they're they're two and oh to to start the year um it's a, a this game is different than the last game in that I feel like they escaped whereas I felt like they would eventually overpower San Antonio uh this game really kind of was more luck uh <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break here uh and then we'll circle back and talk more about that but before we go to break, I would like to ask everyone, if you have the opportunity, to go down and click the like button. Uh, the like button, particularly for live streams, is very helpful. Right now we got, I don't know, a little under 200 folks in here. Would love to see that get higher and clicking the like somehow has helps with the algorithm and bumps people up. Also, if you haven't considered subscribing to our show, I would love it if you subscribe to Pod Maverick. Josh and I would be very grateful. For those of you who are kind of flying in or new here, uh, we do two recap shows for every game if we're able to do it. We do this one with Josh and I here where we talk. Then we take about a 20-minute break, and then I come on alone, and we host with any Mavericks fan or really any kind of basketball fan that wants to come up here and talk hoops. Sometimes it's a little messy because we, you know, none of us are like professionals. We all do this for, you know, I do this for fun. Uh, but we have a great time, so I would uh, like to like you to consider coming back and joining that show, particularly if you have a take, because you can come up. The, the software is real easy to access, and you can just hop right up here and talk to me about basketball for a few minutes. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search. Match. With Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. One of the things I love about Indeed is it makes hiring all in one place so easy and streamlined so I can spend more time on the rest of my business. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Okay, so now that I've uh, made my 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 shill my 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 <laughs> pitch to everyone, I appreciate everyone who's willing to do that. By the way, we we still are interested in show sponsors. If that's something that you are are uh, somebody out there who knows those sorts of things, we will sell. Um, yeah, we <laughs> will we will sell things. Um, all right. So understanding, we think the Mavericks escape. It starts with the defense. Do you think it is execution on the defensive end? 
or do you think it is scheme? Because Luca, for example, is playing better defense. He really is. I, I, that was a big key in the second half, I think, to keep this game from getting out of the way uh, or out of control. Um, he really bodied up on Mikhail Bridges pretty well. Bridges had a pretty awful game. He was 6 to 17 from the floor. He got 18 points because, you know, just by attrition, he shot 17 times. Um, and there were moments where where they were hunting, like they were trying to get that matchup. They were screening Luca onto Bridges, and Brid- and Luca was just not giving Bridges anything. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it was it was really impressive. So I, I think there's been some decent um, individual effort. Uh, Grant Williams had some good plays uh, in the second half defensively as well. Uh, the thing is, it does it just doesn't seem to be consistent right now. And I don't know how much of that is scheme, how much of that is effort. How much of that is rotation? Because it feels like they haven't had a set rotation for two games now. They've really kind of kid is kind of mixed and matched a little bit and done some things that I think some of the fans are, are kind of pulling their hair out about. But he, you know, as he's trying to find something in these first two games, like a rotation uh, that he he can trust. I don't know if that's has to do with it. Like you know, guys are playing next to each other that have never played played next to each other before. So. Yeah. That affects communication. That affects, you know, your defensive rotations and things like that. But also, you know, guys just got to stop getting beat off the dribble, which is something we saw last year. And, you know, it's one thing where, where it's Luca or Kyrie uh, who have had their saloon door moments in the first two games. And then credit to Luca, I think he's played better defense in the second halves of each you know, Spurs game and this Nets game. So credit to him. But, like, Grant Williams, you know, got burned a bunch in the first half against the Spurs. He stepped it up, thankfully. And Mm -hmm. Derek Jones has gotten burned a couple times. Derek Jones, for being out there for to to do a specific (laughs) thing, he's not doing the thing he's been put out there to do. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, I'm not really sure his his contributions have been been pretty suspect. I just don't really. Like, if he gets a straight line drive off of a Luka pass, sure, he's able to make a layup. But defensively, I'm not seeing it. Like, Yeah, I mean. For a specialist, he's not very special. Right. He's on the floor for his defense because you you look at his two games, you know, he's missed all his three pointers. He's only scored off some, like you said, some wide open layups and stuff. So mm-hmm. but you take that if he plays really good defense uh for a couple of minutes here and there, but that's I don't think it's been that impressive. Josh Green has been all over the place. Uh his one on one defense has been a little suspect. His help defense has been weird. He's got this problem. He had it last year where he over helps. Like he is so eager to rotate and help his teammates that sometimes he rotates when he doesn't need to rotate. And that kind of opens things up on the floor for some other people. Tim has been Tim. He had a really weird space cadet moment uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, I need to find um, I need to find it. Uh, well, I can't remember. Who let me, let me ask you a question. Minute. Yeah. So we had a, we had a question over the summer. I remember this, where it was a guy, I can't remember the guy's name. I, I didn't save the email. I'm looking for it right now. But the guy basically said, you know, I, I watch basketball, I like basketball, but there's a lot of stuff when it comes to terminology that I don't understand. Could you walk us through what overhelping is and what it does? Well, like overhelping, like, you know, it's 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 sliding over to, to stop a drive that necessarily doesn't need to be stopped, or it's doubling when you don't need to double, or – or it's shading to help, you know, like if he, if he sees Luca isolated against Bridges and he's maybe shading a little bit too far because instinctively he thinks, well, I need to help Luca because I don't want to leave Luca on an island against this really good, mm-hmm. uh, you know, really good player, you know, you know, I'm trying to help my star. But when you do that, you're opening up passing lanes, you're opening up driving lanes that shouldn't be there. And, um, to, yeah, to, and to sort of I asked you a question and then I'm interrupting you. No, no, no. Go ahead. One That's of the things that I, I think is important to understand, guys, is that six inches, six inches a foot, something like that, between being closer than your if you're off your defensive assignment more than you ought to be, that six inches or a foot can be all the difference between an open passing lane to a wide open shooter or a cutter. It, it's defense on a b- Defense at a basketball level is really difficult to master, but it's really pretty straightforward to explain. And then you get into like the nitty gritty and part, uh, you know, when you have all these athletes and length and arms, it's really difficult. And so Josh Green, everyone really kind of assumes he's a very good defender. And I think he has the tools to be a good defender. But for the better part of two and a half years, 
I have seen him make mistakes that lead to his teammates getting hung out to dry. It's a lot easier at the big man level to see mistakes. You know, that's why Lively is so interesting to us. But like JaVale was so awful because JaVale would just hang his teammates out to dry with overhelp on situations because it forces everybody else to have to rotate down a man. There's a lot more to this. I, I sort of put you on the spot with that, but it's like, yeah. it's, it's very frustrating to watch because what happens is that when there's a breakdown one place, there's inevitably a breakdown in the next part of the, of the kinetic chain in the defense with these five guys having to play in sync. And if they've not played a lot together yet, mistakes are going to happen, but a mistake based on overhelp is very frustrating because it causes a problem before it needs to happen. It's it's it, it kind of drives you nuts when you watch it on tape later. And Green is just really rough at it. Yeah, and especially when it's coming from, you know, like Green, like he needs to be a plus. Like mm-hmm. they need to be good at defense when he's yeah. on the floor. Because again, you know, as much as they've brought in reinforcements uh, defensively, you know, your two best players are still Luca and Kyrie. Um, you know, you still playing Tim Hardaway Jr. A lot of minutes. You're still, you know, Dwight Powell played a lot, uh, you know, came back in the rotation. Like you still have some one way players that you have to account for. So if green is not fulfilling his job on the defensive end, like you said, that just, that cascades again and just makes things a lot harder. Um, also, you know, Maxi Kleba just, you know, I don't know. They just, <laughs> just, uh, just not, uh, you know, defensively, just not as much of a as as an impact as he used to make his his ability to make defensive plays, like steals and blocks, just feels mm-hmm. feels gone. And you know, we'll we'll have to see if he can round into form. I, you know, that hamstring, like that hamstring injury. Credit to him for coming back last season. Yeah. Like that's a season ender for you know I don't know how many guys in this league. So the fact that he was able to come back and finish last season is really a credit to his his work ethic. Um, but that's a that's a tough injury, and so like, I don't think it should be surprising that he looks a little, you know, he looks a little rough. Like uh, you know, it might take him, you know, some more time than than we anticipated because that was that was a really you know that's a really rough injury for a guy his age and, and his size. So so you know, we'll see there. But yeah. Uh, so cowboy in the chat asks, or I mean, makes a statement that I think is worth expounding on a little bit. I wonder how much goes on coaches not teaching guys to defend off ball. This is what is so difficult at the NBA level because you're, you know, we all know that Josh, for example, hasn't played a ton of basketball compared to a lot of NBA players, but at the lower level, you're taught certain defensive things about where you're supposed to be on the floor. And the problem is at the NBA level, the guys are so dang good. You have to relearn some of the basics, which almost always means being closer to your man than what feels natural. Mm. Right. Right. Because it's, yeah, it's just that little bit. And so this is actually a really good segue to kind of what I think will be the defining talking point. And I was already frustrated with it. Derek Lively played 17 minutes. And after the game, I mean, he went out at eight about 840 in the third quarter and didn't return until four seconds left in the game. And the Mavericks' decision to opt to what they later referred to, meaning Jason Kidd and then the, the, the announced team, as going small, I thought I was going to lose my mind. Now, I'm trying not to overreact because it's the second game of the year. <laughs> but Derek Lively, and I mean this sincerely, I think Dwight Powell is actually a pretty good defender on the perimeter. He's terrible in the paint. We know that. We know that. That's what part of why Lively exists. Yeah, his best defensive qualities are when he's switching, trapping, using his feet. Here's kind of the thing about Derek Lively. He can do those things too. Do you know how many personal fouls Derek Lively had tonight? Let me look it up. He had zero. He had zero. Six, that's pretty so good. any any of the sort of concerns about you know fouling so far through NBA games, it just hasn't been there. He's 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 committed z- so few personal fouls as to affect the game in a negative way. Whereas we thought he's going to come into the year and be a real fouling problem. Yeah, he hasn't he been in is, foul trouble in either either game so far. He has, guys. He is seven foot one with a seven foot seven wingspan. Okay. You remember how we were talking about inches mattering just a few minutes ago? It helps to have a guy that can do this. The the idea that he cannot move laterally, which is heavily implied by going small, which is what Brian Damaris did after the game, and which is what Kid did. I simply do not agree 
that that was the reason why, like maybe that was the choice they made, but I do not agree with the reasoning. I just, I, I, I'm really frustrated by this because you draft this guy with the 12th pick. He plays amazing in game one, does nothing that I could see because he got lost. He got stranded on some islands guarding smaller guys earlier in the game, and he did great. What am I missing? I don't know. When he got pulled, did he make a mis- – was there like a pretty – There had to have been. Because I, didn't, I need to, to rewatch out, it. Yeah. For you to go out at 8 thir- 8.43 – and yeah. and I went and did this because it's great. I we're, we're I'm doing the recap and I asked for somebody's help on our staff. And instead of helping me, our our other editor Doyle Raider was like, "Go check the game log." I'm like, "Dude, I know I'm I'm writing about the game, whatever." Uh, <laughs> I just I, I I don't I didn't see anything. But okay, let's assume it was a mistake. Fine, but then you put him back in. Going with Maxi and Dwight is simply. It, it doesn't work. It, we have a year's worth now of experience to see that it doesn't work. And unless Luka Doncic goes God mode, if, if, he, if he doesn't go God mode, this is the only thing we're talking about. That's just a fact. What do you think? No, no, for sure. And I, I really don't mind like Dwight and Maxi being like your bigs off the bench. But yeah, the, the defensive answer is a little suspect to me. I, I'm just now watching um, the play that happened. Three. Thanks, David. But, but uh, I'm watching it right now, and it was not Lively's responsibility. So he steps up. It's a Mikhail. Br- it's a Ben Simmons, Mikhail Bridges pick and roll. Ben mm-hmm. Simmons is setting the screen for Mikhail. Um, so so Lively is guarding Ben Simmons. So he steps up onto Bridges. Um, doesn't do the best job containing him, but I wouldn't call it a blow by. But Kyrie completely abandons his man. Like I, that's probably an overhelp. Yeah. Um, and, and that's where the open three pointer came from. So, I mean, and, I guess yeah, I don't, you could maybe say lively didn't get in front of Mikhail enough to, to cut off the drive, but it wasn't like, uh, it didn't look like anything egregious. Um, but, and so like, I think, you know, maybe that was it, but really I wonder if the reason why the lively never came back in is because Pal just kept scoring, <laughs> I mean, oh, no, he, no, Pal, Pal justified his own existence yeah. in the game because he had tippins. He hit his first three since the Eisenhower <laughs> administration. Like, Powell played a good game. It yeah, is I, not an indictment of Powell. It is more an indictment in my frustration with the process and then being told after the game that bad process justifies good results, which over an NBA season is not the case. You can win games and be happy with it. But, the, you know, I think we would all agree that the Mavericks stole one tonight. Yeah, for sure. And I wonder if part of the reason, you know, like I said, Powell just kept scoring. It was pretty funny. Um, so I wonder if the reason why Lively didn't come back in, it was because Kid just wanted to ride the hot hand. And at a certain point, Lively had been on the bench for so long, he was probably like, well, I can't put him back in now. Correct. And so I think it was just more like if Powell wasn't scoring – I'm going to gut check and say that uh, Lively probably would have checked back in. So, okay. But again, you know. I, I just find myself frustrated by it. I understand. No, I understand. He played an otherworldly game one. And so much, we talked about this with Jaden Hardy last year, who didn't play a second straight game. Um, there's a confidence issue with playing and routine. And getting pulled – can mess with that now because they won and because lively is smart and quite good. I don't think it matters, but we talked about consistency of role and I don't see a reason why they took him out. That makes sense to me other than we wanted to go with Dwight. That's why they took him out. They wanted to go with Dwight. I'm just glad it didn't bite them in the ass because if it did, I really do think that would be the frontline talking point of why are you pulling the first round rookie who, sh- who, you know, basically helped win the game the other day. Yeah. I don't know. And yeah, and again, Powell just, you know, he had 11 points in 13 minutes. Yes. I think he scored. Did he score all? He might've scored all 11. I don't have the, I, I need the box score up for this, but he might've scored all 11 of those um, in the fourth quarter. He at least scored like eight. I mean, he was at one point their leading scorer in the fourth before Luca checked back in. The three-pointer uh, was hilarious because oh my gosh, I was there for the Dwight Powell Summer League three-point shooting experience where they gave him a green light and he just just couldn't do it. We're talking yeah. like one of nine type performances. Yeah. He, he, had, he, was, he had all 11 of his points in the fourth quarter. So 
I, I have to imagine it was like he probably anticipated getting a moment to sub him in at one point, but Powell just kept scoring, so he just mm-hmm. left him in there. Like that yeah. that to me feels like like if we're trying to find something like reasonable, yeah, that makes more sense to me than that defensive answer because like I mean Yeah. The Mavericks weren't really stopping. Well, so, uh, Scott in the chat says it's it's it except you know it, it, it this is hard to understand except for if they had to find minutes for their sacred cows. I don't think it's that because it I think it's like more rhythm and what they had going. Cause yeah. they, Josh is right now that I'm hearing it, that if Powell wasn't scoring, he probably would have been taken out because if he's not scoring, he's not helping enough on defense. Cause at that point, like Powell still finished at one point. Yeah. Powell, Powell was a negative six to finish and he was in a significant portion of the third and fourth quarter when they were getting waxed. And the only yeah. reason his plus minus isn't worse is because he was also in there when Luca was going to town. So right. It you know it is what it is. Single game plus minus is not yeah and a, a bellwether. It just it's a thing that I look at to be like, all right, is his impact much? You know, we used to do this with McGee a lot, where people would tell us how good his stats look, and it's he's like, guys, he had four rebounds and four points, but he was a negative seven in six <laughs> minutes. So no. yeah, and 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 the thing you know this with Carlisle, you could say this, but like I don't necessarily think Powell is one of kids guys. No, like, but I Powell mean, does has his been job. Here this, yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, like, he's been here. Th- like, Kid has tried to replace him every single... Like, I don't think this is, like, him leaning on a dude that he just can't quit, necessarily, and more just, yeah. fl- like you said, flow. the flow of the game maybe didn't see a point where, uh, you know, uh, he felt comfortable taking Pal out and putting Lively back in. So it's I maybe got- not the answer anyone wants to hear, but but that's probably what Well, I, I do got one question. What do, we, what do we make of Tim Hardaway? Oh, my God. This was a someone can maybe find some plays he made. Um, well, outside of the first like, 18 minutes of both of these games, I feel like his second halves have been abhorrent to, to like <laughs> the point of, of like, I, you know, to where we're getting some like 2019 Kirk rage tweets because he like, Ooh, buddy. Dude. I mean, he just he can't hit. He, he has these sequences where he, what was the sequence where he took a floater, then got it on yes. the baseline and took a second shot? It's just like, dude, stop. Yeah, it was a fast break. I think it was a two on two or two on one. He somehow, instead of getting, you know, in that situation, if you're shooting a shot, you want a layup or a three. He somehow shoots an in between her floater, misses it badly short. Josh Green gets the rebound. Tim relocates to the baseline, but mid bait, like not to the three point line, he catches it like. 15 feet or 18 feet from the basket and just <laughs> shot it again right away. Like 20 seconds, you know, 20 seconds left on the shot clock. It was two of the worst shots he's taken in a, in a long, long, long time. Um, and, and that was like, I, you got to pull him. And of course, you know, he did make like a three, pick a little bit after that. Again, when he's making his, when he's just shooting his spot up looks, like he's such a useful player. Man, when he is doing stuff inside the three point arc, it is just it is a roller coaster of emotion. Well, he's shooting, and this is killing me. He's shooting, he's he shot the third most shots on the team, but he's shooting 35% from the floor. Now we're not talking huge sample, it's 11 to 31, something like that. It's awful. It's awful. And so if you're really mad at Tim, I'm simply gonna say that I get it. But I have a feeling that kid is doing this for a reason. He did this with Chris Stapps Porzingis before they tried to trade him. Um, he plays guys who he like, he's not for a guy that the Mavericks probably want to move for Hardy related reasons to get Hardy shots. They have to keep playing Tim to show his value because Tim does have value. Like he scored a bunch of points in the first quarter yesterday. And I think he did the same thing today. It's just, he, he goes through these cold spells where it's like, Man, do we need a a Latvian laser rule where if you miss three shots in a row, we pull you out of the game? Yeah, that yeah, that was rough. Uh, I don't. Who is your? This is bad to do live, but who's your who's your guy uh, from Slovenia? I can't remember. Uh, he's not. He he does like some media. Matei. Yeah. Um, what, it, no, like, we know his talk. No, yeah. Sport like his his handle is like sport, sport info. Yeah, that's Matei. Yeah. Or. Sport info. Okay, okay, okay. Give me yeah. a moment. Can it's I okay. send you a link to send you if you want to play this? Oh, Hot will notch. this will this be? Um, How long is it? 
Uh, let's see. Where is this it? This is the best live audio. Um, if the answer is yeah. questionable, the answer should be no. It's seven seconds long. Oh, seven seconds is fine. I played okay. like a minute of video, and that's why we got waxed. Yeah, send okay. it on over to me. Okay, I'm going to put it in the chat. Oh, in the chat. Chat's is that the best? Like. How do I how do I send it to you? This is oh we have God, like nine means of communicating with each other. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Here, I'll put it in Slack. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. This Sorry, is the best. But I want I want you to watch. <laughs> I want you to watch this. I want you to watch this before we stop. Okay, All I right. like this. This is this is how we this is how we win as we yeah. figure out this this sort of stuff. Sorry if anybody can hear my laundry going off in the back uh, in the background. Um, just the just top notch work here by the your good people at Mavs Moneyball. <laughs> um, I told somebody the other day we need an editor and I'm, or not an editor a uh, um, let's see your Chrome tab. We're gonna go Matei Sport Info. All right, you guys see this here? Is it pulling up? Yeah, there it is on the screen. So we're gonna maximize this real quick. This is just seven seconds of video. So restart it, get it all the way to the beginning. Okay. Who am I watching? Tim. Look at Tim. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna watch it one more time. <laughs> Dude, what are one you doing? One more time. What are you doing? That's magic. Back, For those, back to the ball trying to tell someone else to pick up his man in a half court set. Like for those who are listening, I kid you not, his back is to the ball. He's standing at the three point line facing the <laughs> opponent's goal, yelling at someone else to pick up their man as his man hits a three. Oh my god. Like, dude, like that combined with those shots he was taking in the second half, like Dalton has this as this gif of Tim spinning around twice in a circle because he can't figure out where his man is. I, I think of it often. Yeah, it is. And I mean, uh, again, it's a miracle the Mavericks are 2 0 with, with how some of these guys are. I'm glad, I'm glad they're 2 0, though. And I think <laughs> that's where we settle. The Mavericks yes, will yes. play again. They play. The, so we have two days off. The first kind of two day off uh, perform uh, uh, start to the season. So we know no game Saturday, no game Sunday. Yeah. They play again on Monday. Who do they play on Monday? You would think that I would know this being the, the <laughs> site manager, but that is not a thing. It's having me. To, oh, yeah, this is a great. The, the first Memphis game, um, yeah. which they're coming off a game with the so they get to play the wizards tomorrow but they lost to the nuggets tonight and i as i understand it it so they're zero and two to start the year as i understand it the nuggets game was like a knife fight uh and it's yeah so so i'm really looking forward to that one that one will be fun that one will be really fun yeah um, um can i make one more point before we go because we're wrapping up so i, I just want to say um this luca performance again it was <laughs> It's insane, but I want to just urge a little caution. I mean, you, people are going to probably pick this apart for being negative, but we're two games in, two clutch games, two clutch wins that basically Luca had to to take over to win the game because he was incredible down the stretch against the Spurs, 33 points, 13 rebounds, 10 assists, um, 50, over 50% shooting. Then, of course, tonight, 49 points, not nine three-pointers, no turnovers. No turnovers, by the way. That's um, amazing. That, that's another thing they were. That's another reason why they won the game. They had nine turnovers, and Brooklyn had fifteen. Uh, Kyrie had zero turnovers as well. So Kyrie and Luca zero turnovers for both for them. So that's that's probably low key why they won the game. Besides Luca brilliance, but again, you know, last season he had stretches before the All Star break, before February, where he was doing stuff like this, mm -hmm. and. I know that they're doing they're kind of mixing up his minutes a little bit. So he's not as maybe gassed in the fourth quarter. He's not playing full first quarter. You know, I know that they're doing stuff, but again, the shots are the shots, usage is usage. He's the workload is is strikingly similar to the first half of last season, where we all pretty much said, despite the wins, we were like, This is this is inhuman. Like you cannot Ask a guy to do this Where, for seventy minutes games tonight, though. What were Luca's minutes tonight? Pretty, I mean, that it's okay. To thirty-six and then thirty-four against the Spurs. So yeah, to me, if you're hovering around that thirty-six minute mark and not the forty-one, forty-two mark, that is an element of this that matters to me. Then there's a secondary thing where Kyrie Irving will wake up and have a plus yeah, game yeah, yeah. where he's the guy for sure. You know? and I also uh -huh. think Josh Green might have one of those at some point, despite him occasionally feeling like he doesn't know how to play basketball. Right. So again, it's it's not a big deal and right now. It's two games, but they need to get a win without Luca looking like 
basketball Jesus <laughs> or looking like a superhero. And I well, you understand- know what my wife said after the game? And my yeah. wife, again, she makes like one astute comment. Well, my wife's very smart, but she doesn't really pay attention to the game. And then she'll say something that's like, oh, my God. Yeah. She goes after the game. She goes, it's nice to see Luca not look tired during the post game sure. interview. For sure. But it's also game two. Like, sure. what, my thing is, my point is, is he going to look like this if they need him to do this every single night no. yeah, okay. when it's January? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying they got to get a little bit of this together because you cannot go down the road that you went last season where you basically need Luca to score 40 points for you to win. Like they just need, be, you know, you, they could do all the minutes tweaking, rotation tweaking, all this stuff in the world, but no guy can hold up for eighty-two game season if they're expect if he if this is the load he's expected to carry. So again, like you said, the counter is Kyrie will come around, uh, Josh Green will keep playing better, like they will get some better performances. Yeah, they I'm had, just saying like, it needs to happen. Like they well, just the whole they team cannot rely on tonight there. on offense. That's like an under yeah. like you go through the box score and it's like e. Yeah. This so I'm just, so I'm just I'm just saying it's a great. I just hope they do not need Luca to keep scoring forty uh, to win because I just don't want him to wear out again in January. They need to be able to get through some games uh, where they just don't need him to be a superhero. I don't think that's that much to ask from this roster. Uh, so again, I think this gets solved when Kyrie rounds into shape. So so we'll see what happens there. Yep. Okay, guys, it's 11 o'clock on the dot, which meant we went a little longer than I want us to normally go. But when the conversation is good, you keep it going. I will be back live in about 15 minutes. So if you want to hang out, switch over to the other YouTube and be ready for me to go live in 15 minutes, I really want your participation. We had a great time talking ball. Uh, Shout out to my guy, Austin, again, whose internet was from the 1990s and he could (laughs) not join our show after four attempts, but he finally did um we had a couple of first time joiners it's it's really fun it's nice to talk like literally talk basketball with your friends i can't express that enough because when you talk over a screen you talk over twitter so easy to misunderstand people but like having a basketball conversation is fun and you should want to have fun with me for at least another hour i'll be right back uh this has been kirk henderson and josh bow thank you so much for joining please take the time to subscribe leave us a review shoot us an email where is our email thing i knew that it is pod maverick podcast at gmail.com we'll be back here shortly thanks so much for spending time with us go mavs